All right, Shalom Akim. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. And Shalom to the uh, to the brothers out there in the four corners of the earth, pushing out this word in truth and in sincerity um, to the hopeful elect. All right. In this video, you know, um, we're up there in Wisconsin, uh, the brother uh, with the brother Itazawan. Um, you know, and came, I came across, uh, this book. Well, you know, he showed this book unto me. Um, you know, as you see on the screen, it's called, uh, the medieval empire of the Israelites, man. You know, I did it quick, uh, Google search, um, is written by, uh, Robert Grishin and Vladimir M. Uh, Melamed. All right. You know, and, and this brother, uh, th this book, um, carries some heat. You know, um, concerning uh, the ten, quote unquote, the ten lost tribes of Israel, man. You know who they are, okay? You know, and just to give a, a little backdrop, back, uh, backdrop on this. Um, if you go to shopping, all right. This first book, th this is by Judah Israel. It's, it's not the book I'm referring to. It's these bottom two, and as you can see, the book's going for about a thousand bucks. The lowest is is a little bit old, is over half a thousand dollars. All right, so you know obviously they they they're trying to hide something. All right, so without further ado, you know I want to go into this uh, uh, section that I found here on the medieval empire of the Israelites. All right, it is uh, on page twenty nine, um, uh, speaking commenting about Ecuador. It says. As regards, uh, as regards the South American Indians and their possible relations to the law, lost tribes of Israel, an article was published in the Israeli news Ma'ariv, December 1974, with the following content. In 1987, the Jesuit Nicolas del Sou was sent to South America by the King of Spain for missionary purposes. To convert the Indians to Christianity, it says in Argentina, uh, Salakia, in Argentina, Nicholas discovered a people who bore Jewish names, namely Abraham, David, Moses, and so forth. To the question about whether they were circumcised, these people answered thus: "Yes, just like our ancestors." Okay, so there it is, man. This is proof here that. The natives of the Americas, which includes North, Central, and South America, are Israelites, man. All right, they had names that were uh, of, of uh, uh, honorable and holy men in the scriptures, man. Abraham, David, and Moses, and they and, and when they asked him if they were circumcised, it says that he said yes, just like our ancestors, because that was a a covenant, you know, we uh, we have with the Most High. All right, well, Abraham with the Most High to show that he was going to bless his seed, all right? And that was going to and that was to be done from generations to generations, all right? It says, in this same region were found stone knives used for circumcision. Sharpen, uh, sharpened stone knives are mentioned also in the Bible as special instruments for completion of the rite of circumcision. An Argentinian tribe... Uh, all right, so you know, that's how uh, Abraham, you know, uh, he circumcised, uh, you know, uh, the people in his camp. All right, the men in his camp. Um, I'm gonna keep going. It says an Argentinian tribe where a stone slab with three commandment commandments were found caused no less interest, man. So uh, on top of it, there's more, man, more to be interested about, interested about, man. All right. Because these people carried the customs, man. All right. It's, uh, it says, these were the commandments. It says, do not steal, do not lie, and do not kill. One may assume that these commandments are from the Old Testament. And they appeared in these lands before the arrival of the Spaniards. All right. So there, there you go. These were here. Before the Spaniards came, so you can't say, "Oh, well, the Spaniards came and 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 they brought Christianity, and you know that's why they got those names, and um, you know that's why um, you know um, 
uh, uh, um, you know, they, they have these commandments there now. All right, it was before. All right, in in 1974, in this very same region, were found round stone slabs with menorahs, seven pointed candlesticks on them. Along the sides of these menorahs, in the Aramaic language, which Aramaic, uh, hey, these devils, man, they just gotta, you know, th uh, try to throw you off, man. It's just talking about Hebrew, man. All right, the uh, in the Hebrew language. Which later on they're going to tell you that they spoke Hebrew. Alright, I'm going to read it again. It says, along the sides of these of these menorahs in the um, Aramaic language was the inscription, Passover. The Aramaic language we recall is a language of ancient uh, uh, Israel, man. Alright. So, if we go... Um, if we go... Um, uh, ancient Israelite language. And we go to images. You got this. What is the Paleo Hebrew? All right. Here you go. The Ah, the Ba, the Ga, Da, Ha, Wa, Za, Ha. All right. And so forth and so forth. All right. Then we go to uh, Paleo Hebrew. Same thing. Alright. Oh, this one shows a bunch. Let's see here. Here you go. Paleo and modern Hebrew. Alright. The one on the on the left, the far left, is the Paleo Hebrew, alright? With the name, uh the column under name having the modern Hebrew, alright? Now let's go to um how do they say it? The Aramaic language. These guys are devils, man. Mm -hmm. It's just Hebrew, man. Early Aramaic alphabet. It's just talking about Hebrew, man. Alright? So that's the point. Um, it says... In, in the Aramaic... Um, I'm going to go to the next verse. All right. It says, uh, actually, let me just reread this. It says, along the sides of these menorahs in the Aramaic language was the inscription, Passover. The Aramaic language we recall is the language of ancient Israel. All right. So why else would they have pass, uh, Passover there if it wasn't their custom, man? Eh? All right. They had this custom. All right. It says, Alongside the slab was found a, st a long stone in a shape which was which resembles a brick with an engraving of a ship, the emblem of the Zebulon tribe, and with engraved with engraved word Sephora, uh, the name of Moses' wife, and perhaps the name of the ship. Does this mean that uh, Jews sailed here on a ship? It says scientists think that this stone is nearly three thousand years old, man. So there you go. Even they'll tell you that this was before the Spaniards. All right. So this next paragraph, you know, it brings out some BS about the Talmud. I'll read it. I'll read through it quickly just to give uh, some um, uh, some context into the following paragraphs. All right. And to also prove that um, these uh, fake Jews that are in the, tri uh, the land of Israel today, who are really Khazars. All right. They don't follow after the Bible. They follow after the Talmud, man. They they don't follow truth. All right. They're imposters and they're liars. All right. So I'm going to read here. It says it must be said that the problem of the South American Jewish Indians have been occupying minds in Europe since as early as the 17th century, man. And and that's beautiful, man, because they tell on themselves right there and there it says it must be said that the problem of the South American Jewish Indians have been occupying minds in Europe since as early as the 16th century. All right, so those are two things, man. Esau, Edom, these Europeans, they've been knowing that the natives of the Americans, Americas are Israelites, man, at least back since the 1600s, man. All right? And on top of that, they tell you that they see it as a problem, man. 
it must be said that the problem of the South American Jewish Indians has been occupying the mines, man, in Europe, all right? So what made it a problem, man? All right? See, the, the thing is that uh, Esau and Edom, these so-called white people, man, they have a perpetual hatred against Israel, man. All right? And they don't want us to be nothing more than niggas and spicks, man. They don't want us to, to see our, our true nationality for what it is, man. And we are Hebrew Israelites, man, we, which uh, which is uh, Israel, man. Yashar Allah. He is the prince of the power, man. Yah, he, Shar, uh, prince, Allah, power, man. All right? We're not just some, uh, well, quote, unquote, my, minorities, man. All right? And if we turn back to the Heavenly Father, he will come back and save us, man. All right? And that's what everybody else uh, are, are, are you two third? Uh, you know, are you other Israelites? Don't understand, man. All right. I'm gonna keep going. It says, um, you know, so that was a beautiful point. But I'm gonna keep going. It says, uh, the Amsterdam Rabbi Manasseh ben Israel. All right, this is a, a, a fake Jew. All right. It says, um, devoted many years to it. So here it goes an example. This is a man that had been. Uh, uh, knowing uh, about the the South American, quote unquote Jews, which the South American uh, uh, Israelites, man, would be the correct way to say it. All right, it says um, a deeply religious man. He believed that there existed an uh, an earth on earth, the mysterious sabbatical river, Sambation, you know, which is bullshit, which is mentioned in the Talmud. All right. Its miraculous, its miraculous property is the fact that it is rough with rolling stones and absolutely insurmountable on weekdays. But with the advent of the Sabbath rest, it calms and becomes quiet. The Jews uh, living on the side of the sand basin have no possibility of crossing the river in so much as, in so much as it would be a violation of, of Sabbath. And they would only exchange words with their fellow tribesmen on the side of the river whenever it becomes calm. All right, and that's bullshit, man. <laughs> then how do the other guys get to the other side of the land, man? Uh, other side of the river. That's what they uh, they originally think. That's what a lot of people, which they're gonna say, uh, thought that they were. I'm, I'm just gonna read it. It says, and they ex uh, and they can only exchange words with their fellow tribesmen on this side of the river, whenever it becomes calm. The ancient historian Josephus uh, Flavius, the Judaic War. And Pliny the Elder wrote about the Sambation. All right, Manasseh ben Israel emphasized in this book that many learned men believe that the ten tribes of Israel uh, settled on the other side of the river. All right, so a lot of people—that's what the uh, so quote unquote learned men believed this 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 BS, man. All right, that's what that was their excuse for where they left, uh, uh, where they went, which. <laughs> that cuts you even your own doctrine, man. Because if nobody can cross it, then how did they cross it? You know, these people are silly, man. But later on, as we read on, it explains that even Manasseh and Israel, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, denied, you know, uh, realized the truth that the ten lost tribes are in fact in America, man. All right. Uh, and let me let me say it correctly, the Americas, all right, and that including North, Central, and South, all right. So I'm gonna keep going. It says he qu he also quoted many authors, for example, Josephus Flavius, who in his own works had maintained that supposedly the Emperor Titus himself had seen this river, which is more bullshit, all right. It says later after a meeting of Manasseh with the missionary Antonio de Montezinus. All right. The rabbi finally was convinced that the American Indians in particular are the are the descendants of the 10 tribes of Israel. There you go, man. So even he was convinced, man, after the missionary Antonio de Montezinus gave him the breakdown, man. All right. Let's see what he told him. Manasseh learned from Montezinus that in 1642, when uh, when the latter was traveling in the mountains of Ecuador, so Montezinus was in in the mounts of Ecuador, says four Indians met him who greeted him with the Shema, Shema Yashra'ala. All right. He, you know, says, Hear Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And let me, let me, uh, and we're going to pull that up, man. 
Okay, here we go. In uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. All right? Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our power is one, one Lord. All right? So how did, in 1642, how did these Indians meet uh, Montezimu quoting Deuteronomy 6 and 4, man? Because they were Israelites, man. All right? As they said that their ancestors were circumcised, as they had uh, all this uh, archaeology with them, they are Israelites, all right? I'm going to finish off with this last point here. It says the traveler, Montezimus, right? said that the Indians spoke with him in a in Hebrew, all right? So now they're being straight up, talking about Aramaic. It's Hebrew, all right? And called themselves the descendants of Reuben and Levi. Here even Manasseh came to the conclusion that the American Indians are the descendants of the, ten, of the lost tribes of Israel. Manasseh was that fake Jew, all right, that rabbi. It says... On the twenty third December, uh, on twenty third December, sixteen forty nine, he wrote to John Drury, the pur the Puritan divine. I think that the descendants of the ten uh, li that the ten tribes live not only in America but also around the whole world. These are those Jews who have not been seen the second temple. They possibly with the dispersed. Uh, uh, they possibly will be dispersed until the prophecies of their re reunification be realized, man. And that's heavy, man, because that lets you know that these Edomites, these so-called white people, they know the prophecies, man. They went through the scriptures and, and they thoroughly sought out the condition of Israel, man. They knew ab about the separation and they knew that we were promised to be reunified in the last days, man. They knew that, that we'd be scattered across the four corners of the earth, man. All right? So these devils fully know, man. All right? And uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to get some of those precepts. Um, first, uh, we, we, we can go to that Ezekiel, you know, to prove the prophecy that the Bible says that we're going to be reunified, all right? Uh, this is Ezekiel chapter... Um, 37 verse 16 it says moreover thou son of man take thee one stick and write upon it for judah and for the children of israel his companions and take another stick and write for it for joseph the stick of ephraim and for all the house of israel and his companions so joseph and ephraim representing the 10 lost tribes all right quote unquote it says and join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Will thou not show us what thou meanest by this? You know, say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand, man. So that reunification is 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 prophesied, man. And that's what and that stick you see it today, man. Pro that prophecy is being fulfilled now with with uh, the men at Great Millstone, you know, at, with, uh, when you see them with the board and the sign, the twelve tribe sign uh, uh, on the street, man. They have Judah and Ephraim together, man, coming together, man. All right, and that's what scares Esau Edom, the so-called white man, most, man. When we find out that they were Israelites and we come back together, man. All right, one thought he, uh, uh, niggas, spicks, and, 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 uh, and tomahawks, you find out that we're the children of the Most High, man. All right, he chose the things that are not to confound the things that are, man. We were not, and Esau is, but he will soon be confounded, man. He will be soon be brought down. All right. It says, and the sticks wherein thou writest shall be in thy hand before their eyes, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen. You see, they were dispersed, whether they be gone, and will be gathered, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. I will make them one nation in the land of the mounts of Israel, and one king shall be uh, king to them all, 
and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all, man. This is what's coming to pass now, man. All right. And ultimately, it will be finished with once uh, the downfall of Esau Edom comes, man. All right. You know, and, and this is prophecy, man. The, these these devils know what's going on. They know what's up. All right. So, so I, I want to finish it off with this last scripture in Second Ezra, you know, because uh, because these these guys, man, they they've been knowing, man. This is Second Ezra thirteen and forty. All right, and and if you want to read uh, more about the division, uh. You know, um, between the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom of Israel, uh, read uh, Second Kings, the seventeenth chapter. All right, uh, or if I'm not mistaken, First Kings, seventeenth chapter. But pretty much, the Lord uh, uh, rent ten tribes from uh, King Solomon, man. You know, but um, you know, um, continuing on here in Second Ezra thirteen and forty. All right, after the separation, it says. The, uh, those are the ten tribes which are carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king. So Hosea was the king of Israel at the time. All right, the ten tribes, whom Salmanasser the king of Assyria led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. All right, they went to the land of Assyria in captivity. It says, but they, which is the Israelites took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, man. And back in the days, hey, uh, the only um, known, uh, the known land where mankind dwelt was uh, Europe, Africa, Asia, and the Middle East, man. They didn't know about Americas, all right? You know, at, at least it wasn't, uh, 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 it wasn't inhabited, you know, as it is now, it says they they went to that further country that they might there keep their statues, which they never kept in their old land. That's why you you find the natives of this land. They have uh, um, what you call ponchos or ponchos, however, however you want to say it. All right. With the fringes on the bottom and the ribbon of blue, man. That's why our culture is against homosexuality, man. That's why uh, they're he uh, he heavily. Uh, um, you know, um, into into worship a, a, a fucking uh, a god, man. But they go off now, you know, worshiping other gods, man. All right. But the zeal is there. It says, it says, and and they entered into Euphrates by the narrow passages, uh, narrow places of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them and held held still the flood, so they were passed over. For though the country uh, for Though that country there was greatly uh, was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half, and the same region is called Arsareth, man. All right, you know, and I wanted to bring out this Arsareth, man. All right, because another point that they know who we are, if we look up in the Jewish Encyclopedia, the unedited full text of the 19, 1906 Jewish Encyclopedia, we look up Arsareth, right? It says. The name of the land beyond the great river, far away from the habitation of man. We just read that in Second Ezra or Fourth Ezra, you know, um, which is one and the same. All right, um, thirteen and forty-five. All right, it says far away from the habitations of man, in which the ten tribes of Israel will dwell, observing the laws of Moses until the time of restoration, according to Fourth Ezra, uh, thirteen and forty-five. Columbus, and this is the point, Columbus identified America with this land. Christopher Columbus, uh, C. Kaiser, uh, Kaiserlings, Christopher Columbus, translated by Dr. C. Gross, Gross page 15, all right? There you go, man. And then when you watch uh, 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 the movie 1492, uh, the, the character that plays Columbus, he says it. He says it. It's in like the first 15 mo minutes of the movie. He says it. He says, what about Ezra? What about the writing of Ezra? It says Ezra was a Jew. So so was uh, uh, so was the Lord. Something to that effect. All right. But he says, what about Ezra? So these devils, man, the, these uh, Edomites, 
Uh, these so-called white people, man, they know. They've been knowing, man, who you guys are, man. You know? Uh, um, matter of fact, I know I said I was going to end it off with that Ezra's, but that was that's prophecy, man. I'm going to get here in uh, Psalms, chapter 83. We'll start off the top. It says, a song, a song or psalm of Asaph, keep not thou silence, O Yahweh. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O Yahweh. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance, man. And these other nations, man, they this is what they've been trying to do. They've been trying to cut off Israel from remembering themselves, man. This has been a, 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 a council of theirs for quite some time now, man. That's why they don't tell you what you are, man. To You know, you're only good to them if you think that you're a nigga spick or tomahawk, man. All right. Verse 5, it says, For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against the, the tabernacles of Edom, first na uh, nation mentioned, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, the Ishmaelites, which is you Arabs, who, 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 uh, who, who, um, who, who, um, uh, who made the ships, you know, uh, to, to bring the, uh, the Negroes over to the Americas of Moab. You know, y'all all in our neighborhoods, man, se selling us your goods, man. Uh, uh, you know, helping Esau eat them. All right. The Hagarines, Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the, in the inhabitants of Tyree, man. You Philistines, Tyree, you, you, you real uh, um, Africans, man. Asher also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, Salah, man. All right. So it's all these nations come together against Israel, man. All right, and and, and 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 they've been knowing, man. They've been in cahoots. They've been counseling together, so that you guys don't find out who you are, man. Cause look at, you know, hey, it's a spirit, man. The spirit is pulling me to to bring out these uh, scriptures, man. Cause they know, man. This is a representative of Ammon, you uh, Jap Japanese, man. They, you guys know, this is Judas five and seventeen. And they're talking about us, the Israelites. It says, and while they sinned not before their God, they prospered because the God that hated iniquity was with them. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles very sore and were led captives into a land that was not theirs. And the temple of their God was cast to the ground and their families were taken by their enemies, man. Because these devils, these nations, starting with Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, they know if we sin against our power, he, he won't back us up, man. We'd, we'd be messed up, man. That's why they promote the pork, the adultery, the murder to you. All your songs are full with adultery, man. You know, what do they feed you in slavery, man? The chitlins, all right? The carnitas, all right? So much that now you guys are in love with it, man. All right? What do they they bring to you? Uh, Christianity? Catholicism? Catholicism is full with, with uh, idolatry, man. Bowing down to an idol. All right? I'm going to jump down to verse 21. It says, But if there be no iniquity in the nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them and their God before them, and we become a reproach before all the world, man. All right. So, hey, you know, um, like I said in, in, in verse 17, because the God that hateth iniquity was with them man. the Lord hates iniquity, man. And as soon as you uh, real Hebrew Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans, the elect out of those nations, the remnant, you know, and let's not uh, forget the confusion of faces scattered abroad. All right. Uh, uh, until you guys come back to the heavenly father. And, and turn back into his ways, man. You know, uh, we're going to keep getting jacked up, man. But as we see the prophecies, Esau is going down. The elect is waking up. And, and we're, we're in a great time right now, man. Because the elect is going to wake up. And once once it's set, hey, this place is going to be destroyed uh, ultimately by thermonuclear fire. So that the kingdom can be ushered in, man. 
with the righteous judges, those that hate iniquity as well, like the Father does, all right? So, anyways, uh, with that, I hope the elect out there was edified. I want to end by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. And Shalom also too to the brothers out there pushing out this for uh, uh, this word in truth and in sincerity in the four corners of the earth, man, uh, to the hopeful elect. All right. To y'all brothers that say Shalom and a Bad Babal, man, which means uh, destruction to Babylon. Shalom.